Hello and welcome to this exploring session and today we are continuing our journey into the lamentable tragedy of Locrine, the eldest son of King Brutus. King Brutus died last last session I'm afraid, it's very sad. He, he went through all his, his many victories and conquests when he came first to Britain and became king to all his, 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 his mates and his sons. And then um, just before he dies, he, he gives over power of the kingdom. He explicitly gives a crown to his son Locrine, uh, but he also seems to split up the kingdom between his other two sons as well. Uh, at the last moment, he also uh, betroves Locrine to Gwendolyn, and uh, there is the prospect of a marriage there. And then Brutus dies. And there is a lovely um, comic subplot. Uh, a chap called Strombo is in love with Dorothy and uh, they prepare to marry as well by the looks of things. Uh, that's lovely. And then after the funeral itself of, of Brutus, uh, Lockrine and uh, Gwendolyn seem to be going off to, uh, to actually uh, solemnize their, their royal marriage. So that was act one. And uh, act, each of the acts is introduced by Arte our favorite prologist uh, of choice. Um, to continue the journey into act two and three, we have this crack team of readers today. We've had a few technical issues today, but hopefully we're gonna stride through them and come out the other side stronger than we, we came in. So reading the part of Strumbo today is... Currently muted, say hello. A newly unmuted Aliki Chapel. I'm an actor, theatre maker and translator based in England. And reading the parts of Trumpart and Corinius is... Hi, uh, my name's Simon Nader and I'm a Hertfordshire-based actor, writer and director. And reading the part of Dorothy, a ghost and William is... Hi, I'm Valentina and I'm an Italian actor and voice of an artist in London. And uh, reading the part of our favourite introdu uh, introducer, Arte and Albanact is... Hi, I'm Sarah Blake. I'm an actor, writer and direct director, put my teeth back in, uh, living in Germany. And reading today, Humber and Marjorie is... Hello, I'm Helen Good. I'm a historian and I am currently sitting about 500 yards from the banks of Humber. Excellent. <laughs> um, and reading uh, uh, Estrild and Lockrine today is... Hi, I'm Tamara. I'm an actor. I'm usually based in London, currently still stuck in Germany, slowly going mad. <laughs> and uh, reading today the part of Hubba um, I... is... Hi, I'm Alan Scott. I think I have gone mad. <laughs> uh, yes. Hubber, not to be confused with Humber, even though they're very, very similar. Um, but Hubber, be careful, only say it once. Uh, Dan, uh, yes, you're reading Cigar and Camber, aren't you, sir? Yes, I am. And I'm an actor in Montpellier, and everything is fine here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and reading Thrasymachus and Oliver today is... Hi, I'm Ruth Evans. I'm a specialist in medieval English literature and I live in St. Louis, Missouri. And finally, reading uh, Captain and Gwendolyn, hoping the internet connection is, is and all technical issues are solved, is... I'm Scott and I'm an author in Essex. Excellent. And that is the team, unless I missed anyone out. I, I, I haven't managed to do that today. Ah, uh, what well, such a shame. Um, I am your host, Robert Crichton. I'll be reading stage directions and generally keeping everything moving in a forward direction. So let us start act two, scene one, or, well, it's not really scene one. It's sort of the prologue. I, I don't like to call the prologue to a scene a scene. It's not really a scene. It's a thing. So act two, prologue, enter Arte as before. And if you remember, that's with a burning torch and a bloody sword. Uh, after a little lightning and thundering, uh, let there come forth this show. Perseus and Andromedia hand in hand, and Cephus also with swords and targets. Then let there come out of another door, Phineas all black in armour. Uh, Phineas, uh, all black in armour, and with Ethiopians after him, driving in Perseus, and having taken away Andromedia, let them depart. 
Arte remaining saying. Raged Omnia Newman. When Perseus married fair Andromeda, the only daughter of King Cepheus, he thought he had established well his crown and that his kingdom should for aye endure. But lo, proud Phineas, with a band of men contrived of sunburnt Ethiopians, by force of arms the bride he took from him and turned their joy into a flood of tears. So fares it with young Locrine and his love. He thinks this marriage tendeth to his weal, but this foul day, this foul accursed day is the beginning of his miseries. Behold where Humber and his Scythians approacheth nigh with all his warlike train. I need not, I, the sequel shall declare, what tragic chances fall out in this war. So that's the prologue. Nice, cheerful stuff there. It's always uh, lovely um, when I completely forget how to say the word Andromeda, um, which I, I find very weird. Um, very strange. Uh, so we have this, again, we have this uh, sort of interesting dumb show that is thematically connected with stuff that's about to happen, but it's not, again, it's nothing literal. And the Arte vaguely explains it before getting down to the, the important thing uh, turn their joy into a flood of tears. Things aren't going to go well, people. Um, uh, uh, and we're about to be, and it sort of sets up the introduction of new characters because we haven't met many characters in the play so far. How was that for you, Arte? Oh, I loved it. She's 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 just so gloriously evil and marvelous. <laughs> uh, any additional thoughts about the uh, that as a that as a speech? Anybody out there? I think it'd be good if the dumb show was not before, but during it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. With her explaining what's going on, mm. rather than it happening, and then people having to say, now what the, was that? Mm. Yeah, because they're really explicit about the fact that um, it's after, because it's saying, let them depart, and then she's remaining and speaks, and it's like, why aren't you mm. narrating the action? Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I think in, in terms of navigating that for a modern production, you'd want to clarify what's going on rather than leave people just going, huh? Um, we want to avoid those Scooby-Doo moments. Um, the one thing that's slightly strange is Atto saying what tragic chances fall out in this war. Oh, are we in a war? Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. No, it's coming. It's perspective war, it's coming. Right. Mm. Give it another half line. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> There's a yeah. snail in the next line. Hey. Anyway. Is there? <laughs> yes. There oh, is. It does indeed. Yes. You're right. <laughs> You're right. We've got to have the snail first. Got to have the snail. <laughs> do I have to dig out the snail uh, puppet uh, trick you again? You do. You, know? you do. <laughs> That's a not while. a snail. That was, what was that? that was... Well, I, it, it was it was, the, it was it was it was the the head of the snail, and the, you weren't there for that one. <laughs> I saw it afterwards. I was impressed, but that was not a snail. That's was... how I did the snail no, last time. No, you didn't. You did. You did. You did this. Oh yes, you're, you're right. I forgot to do that. You're right. Okay, you're right. See? <laughs> They're coming to take us away. <laughs> okay, yes, and on that note, let's move swiftly on. <laughs> so, with Arte having set the scene, Humber and his Scythians approach if nigh. So, let's see what's happening with Humber. Enter Humber, Hubber, Estrild, Sigur, and their soldiers. At length, the snail doth climb the highest tops, ascending up the stately castle walls. At length the water with continual drops doth penetrate the hardest marble stone. At length we are arrived in Albion, nor could the barbarous Dacian sovereign, nor yet the ruler of Bel brave Belgia, stay us from cutting over to this isle. Whereas I hear a troop of Phrygians under con the conduct of Posthumius' son, have pitched up lordly pavilions and hope to prosper in this lovely isle. But I will frustrate all their foolish hope 
and teach them that the Scythian emperor leads fortune tied in a chain of gold, constraining her to yield unto his will and grace him with their regal diadem, which I will have maugre their treble hosts and all the power their petty kings can make. If she that rules fair Rannis golden gate grant us the honour of the victory, as hitherto she always favoured us. Right noble father, we will rule the land, enthronized in seat of topaz stones, that the crime and his brethren all may know. None must be king of Humba and his son. Courage, my son, fortune shall favour us, and yield to us the coronet of bay, that decked none but noble conquerors. But what saith Estrild in these, to these regions? How liketh she the temperature thereof? Are they not pleasant in her gracious eyes? The plains, my lord, garnished with Flora's wealth and overspread with party-coloured flowers, do yield sweet contentation to my mind. The airy hills enclosed with shady groves, the groves replenished with sweet chirping birds, the birds resounding heavenly melody are equal to the groves of Thessaly, where Phoebus with the learned ladies nine delight themselves with music harmony, and from the moisture of the mountain tops, the silent springs dance with murmuring streams and water all the ground with crystal waves. The gentle blasts of Eurus, modest wind, moving the pittering leaves of Sil Sylvan's woods, do equal it with tense paradise, and thus, consorted all to one effect, do make me think these are the happy isles most fortunate, if Humber may them win. Madam, where resolution leads the way, and courage follows with emboldened pace, fortune can never use her tyranny, for valiantness is likened to a rock that standeth in the waves of ocean, which, though the billows beat on ever side, and Boreas fell with his tempestuous storms, bloweth upon it with a hideous clamour, yet it remaineth still unmovable. Kingly resolved, thou glory of thy sire, but worthy Sega, what uncouth novelties bringest thou unto our royal majesty? My lord. The youngest of all Brutus's sons, styled Albanac, with millions of men approacheth nigh, and meaneth ere the morn to try your force, my dint of fatal sword. Tut! Let him come with millions of hosts? He shall find entertainment good enough. Yea, fit for those that are our enemies. For we'll receive them at the lance's point, and massacre their bodies with our blades. Yea, though they were in number infinite, more than the mighty Babylonian queen, Serimaris, the ruler of the West, brought against the emperor of the Scythians. Yet would we not start back one foot from them, that they might know we are invincible. Now, by great Jove, the supreme king of heaven, and the immortal gods that live therein, when as the morning shows his cheerful face, and Lucifer, mounted upon his steed, brings in the chariot of the golden sun. I'll meet young Albanac in the open field, and crack my lance upon his burgonet, to try the valour of his boyish strength. There will I show such ruthful spectacles, and cause so great a effusion of blood, that all his boys shall wonder at my strength, as when the warlike queen of Amazon, Penthesilea, armed with her lance, Girt with a corslet of bright shining steel, cooped up the faint dark Grecians in the camp. Spoke like a warlike knight, my noble son, nay, like a prince that seeks his father's joy. Therefore, tomorrow, ere fair Titian shine, the bashful Eos, messenger of light, expels the liquid sleep from out men's eyes, thou shalt conduct the right wing of the host. The left wing shall be under Seager's charge, and rearwards shall be under me myself. And lovely Estrild, fair and gracious, if fortune favour me in mine attempts, and make the queen of lovely Albion. Come, let us in and muster up our train, and furnish up our lusty soldiers, 
that may may be a bulwark to our state and bring our wished joys to perfect end. You know, I think there's something lovely about the fact that Humber's son is called Hubba. That, that it's like there's there's this sort of uh, childish version of the father's name. I just, I just Hubba, son of Humber. It's uh, it, it's wonderful. Um, it, it it it's interesting. I I I don't know where precisely Scythia is supposed to be. Um, in the original Geoffrey of Monmouth, uh, they're Huns. And I don't know if that's the same thing, just with a different name. They're um, Scythian Huns. Mm. Yeah, I've heard of Scythian Huns. That's fine. Then I'm just checking that. I, I genuinely <clears throat> didn't know if it was just some, some, some random. Tamara, your hand was up. Well, I was wondering the same thing because um, they, they in the, at the top, it said they were Huns. Then they were talking about Scythia. But the names almost seem like Viking names a little bit. So I was like, what, 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 who, what? Um, and also, can I just say that I'm really disappointed that he didn't tell Estreld to take charge of one of the wings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because she He's loves there. that. And I was, I was so going, oh my God, they won't, because obviously they won't, but, ah. Oh. It looked like they were going to for a moment. Well, in our production, she can. I, I, I don't have a problem with that. She clearly loves the country. Uh, you know, she gets to describe how, yeah, it's, Britain's great. You know, the, 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 the uh, you know, it's not cold, damp and miserable, as everybody else says. No, it's great. Uh, it's Alan. Yeah, um, textual point, five lines up from the bottom of that uh, speech. I think it's, and make the queen. It is indeed. <coughs> of lovely, um. But what struck me is the complete mishmash we've got of about six different mythologies. <coughs> we've got Greek, we've got Roman, we've got Christian, yeah. all sort of mashed up together. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the early, <coughs> that's what Geoffrey of Monmouth <coughs> gave us. Um, you know, we've, we've got these Trojans, um, uh, the Fr uh, uh, Phrygians, um, <coughs> Have, have come from Italy. They've gone all the way around Spain and France, raiding there, raiding Ireland, settling in, in Britain, killing the giants and how they turned up. That's a terrible story that you don't want to hear. Um, and um, they come along. It, it's, it's interesting that the, the additional invaders that are coming over from mainland Europe, they're pagans, um, uh, are slightly mismatched pagans, but they're still, they're, they're, they're definitely pagans. Um, and, and that's, that's quite interesting. So yeah, it, it, it is a bit of a mess, but it's also a deeply rooted mess that goes back, you know, a very long time. Yeah. Tamara. Uh, sorry, it's me again, but it, it's just, it struck me as well because I've never come across as Lucifer as Apollo. Mm. That was really weird to read. That, that was the one that, that struck me as being strange. Hmm. Uh. Lucifer's the morning star, though, isn't he? So I suppose, well, no, Apollo's the sun. Well, yeah, and the morning star is Venus. It's not even a star. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, they, true. they called it the morning star at the time, um, but it, it's it's still, it's weird to, to yeah, to have, have Lucifer on the chariot that carries the sun. Mm. I mean, well, Lightbringer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah but... Uh, Dan, I see, I see a, I see a, a, a gesture. A gesture. I read this version of um, Lokan, not sure exactly who had this portion, but says Lucifer in classical mythology, the morning star, herald of the dawn. Christians later thought of Lucifer as Satan, um, name of Satan before the fall. So there was a before and after that mm. there was. Something there. So. Um, uh, mm. Any any other things about the scene itself and uh, and the characters? You know they're. Uh, you know, they may be invaders, but they, they obviously, they've taken a fancy to the place. Scythia is a region of central Eurasia, but definitely pagan. Mm. Yeah. It they they also... In, um, mm. No, go on, son. No, I was going to say that I'm pretty sure that they fought in the Trojan War as well, the Scythians, because uh, I, I think they fought with the Myrmidons. But anyway, yeah, it's, it's an ancient sort of yeah. warrior. They crop yeah. up in, uh, in Tamburlaine. In mythology, yeah. yeah. Right. The, the, the renowned them. warriors, basically. My map puts them from the top of the Black Sea, from the north coast of the Black Sea, all the way across the top of Iran, practically into Afghanistan. Mm. So, mm. pretty big region. 
this I ahead. think I think from the point of view of this play, they're foreign. <laughs> <laughs> well, well technically can... everyone is. They're <laughs> yeah. all foreigners. They're, yeah, all, but... they're all they're all they've all uh, they're all uh, colonists of this eff effectively empty isle. Right. But, so there Brutus are no native is... Britons here, are they? No, they killed them. Oh right. <laughs> They were giants anyway. Yeah, and they weren't technically native either. It's complicated. Right. You don't want to know. Okay. Um, it's a real downer, trust me. Helen. <laughs> me? Yeah, you were saying something. I, I no, thought, no, no, all I was saying was that, that they, you've got what the first generation of Brutus passing on to the second generation and then all out of the blue, a whole new bunch of... Um, Invaders arrives, mm. and they've got their eyes. They've got their eyes set on the uh, on Albanac, uh, one of the uh, Lockrine's brothers. So um, one of the uh... yes, who's got millions? I really, really don't believe in these millions, and I found that Humber didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> Humber's just like it's fine. I was wondering whether millions means thousands or simply lots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, it's London. It's London counting. One, two, three, four, five, bloody hundreds. Yeah. <laughs> um, or maybe okay. they're just, you know, a bit like Trump. Hundreds of governors got in touch with him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, to a certain extent, following up on the invaders thing. I mean, it, it, it is going back to uh, Sellers and Yeaman. You know, a fresh wave of Danes. Mm. <laughs> Well, that's that's why I was sort of throwing that you know Monmouth is calling them Huns, and it feels much more the, the, more like a Northern European thing in the in, in in the earlier versioning, and that this is this is playing with a different idea. Um, uh, I mean, the names sound a lot more like yeah, that they sound a lot more like yeah, Danes. But Huns so weren't equated. Danes. Huns weren't equated with Germans till 1914. No, but also they were just a massive people, the actual Huns, not mm. Uh, mm. me. Anyway, um. <laughs> we may be getting bogged down. We may be getting bogged down. Um, we've been introduced to these people. It's, uh, it, we've got a, a complication has been added to the story. Uh, always nice to have a complication. Uh, act two, scene two. Uh, we're going back to Strumbo, Trompart and Dorothy. Um, and this is, of course, uh, this this is one of those renowned things in ancient British history, um, and uh, uh, where uh, a, a, a great amount of archaeological evidence has been found for the amount of cobbling that went on. So, um, uh, enter Strombo Dorothy Trompart, cobbling shoes and singing. Uh, you don't have to sing, but try and give this some pace because otherwise this will go on forever uh, to them enter the captain so cobblers I'd appreciate obviously uh, an Alan Partridge reference somewhere as well uh, we cobblers lead a merry life dan 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 void of all on we and strife dan diddle dan our ease is great <laughs> our labour small dan 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 dan, 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 dan. dan. And yet our gains be much with all. Dan, 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 dan. Why this art so fine and fair? Dan, 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 dan. dan. No occupation may compare. Dan, <laughs> dan, 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 dan. For merry past them joyful glee. Dan, 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 dan. Most happy men we cobblers be. Dan, 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 dan. A can stands full of naffy ale. Dan, <laughs> dan, 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 dan. In our shop, still without and fail. Dan, 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 dan. This our meat, this our food. Dan, 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 dan. This brings us to a merry mood. Dan, 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 dan. This makes us work for company. Dan, 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 dan. To pull the tankards cheerfully. Dan, 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 dan. Drink to thy husband, Dorothy. Dan, 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 dan. Where then must trumpet <laughs> there's to be. Dan, 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 dan. Drink thou the rest, trumpet and me. Dan, 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 dan. When that is gone, we'll feel it again. Dan, 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 dan. dan. I'll just briefly pause. Let, let's just let, 
let, let, let that pass. <laughs> Simon, by saying Alan Partridge in advance, <laughs> that, 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 that killed it. Uh, uh, but it's an important, important lesson for today for a modern audience. That's a problem. <laughs> it's, it's an opportunity as well as a burden. <laughs> Uh, I, felt, I felt more like it was the Seven Dwarves, but okay. yes. <laughs> I thought Seven Dwarves, yeah. yeah. Or, or I'll turn to me what a load of cobblers. Yeah. Yeah. I love a load of cobblers. I'm sorry, the, the can stands full of nappy ale. <laughs> There's the t shirt slogan for today. <laughs> no further. T shirt line. <laughs> Fab. Okay, sorry. Let's let's pull it together now. Let's finish. The, let's let's do the scene rather than the song that goes into the scene. Uh, invading invading uh, armies aside, cobblers are 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 merry, as it were. Captain, if you could uh, take it away, please. The fall of state is farthest from Amoy. How merrily he sitteth on his stool! But when he sees that needs he must be pressed, he'll turn his note and sing another tune. Ho! I will leave, Master Cobbler. You are welcome, gentlemen. What will you? Any old shoes or buskins? Or will you have your shoes clouted? I will do them as well as any cobbler in Katniss whatsoever. Oh, Master Cobbler, you are fair deceived in me. For don't you see this? I come not to buy Shane's shoes, but to buy yourself. Come, sir, you must be a soldier in the king's cause. Why, my dear you, sir, has your king any commission to take any man against his will? I promise you, I can scant believe it. Oh, uh, did he give you commission? Sir, you need not care for that. I need no commission. Hold here, I command you, in the name of our king, Albanac, to appear somewhere in the townhouse of Katniss. King Mactabal? I cry God mercy, what have we to do with him or he with us? But, but, uh, you, sir, master, cap and tail, tape and tail, draw your pasteboard, uh, or else I promise you I'll give you a casuanado with a bastinado over your shoulders and teach you to come hither with your implements. Good sir, be content. I'll do the king's command. Put me out of your book, then? I may not. No? Well, come, sir, will your stomach serve you, Hey. Eh? By God's blue blood and halidom, I will have a bout with you. And they fight both enter Thrasymachus. How now? What noise? What sudden clamour's this? How now, my captain and the cobbler so hard at it? Sirs, what is your quarrel? Nothing, sir, but that he will not take press money. Here, good fellow. Take it at my command, unless you mean to be stretched. Truly, Master Gentleman, I, I lack no money. If you please, I will resign it to one of these poor fellows. No such matter. Look, you be at the common house tomorrow. And exit Thrasymachus and the captain. Oh, wife, I have spun a fair thread. If I had been quiet, I had not been pressed, and therefore well may I wayment. Come, sir, I sh shut up, for we must do the wars. And they exit. Oh, oh, that's an interesting scene. I love that scene. Uh, you know, yeah. they're having a happy wedding. Um, and the news of the war from the previous scene ha ruins their day. And it's this aggressive, you know, because they've been so loud having fun. Um, they're that, you know, they've been noticed by this captain. And uh, they're pressed and they can't, they can't find a substitute. They are pressed. Um, and yeah, or you're going to be hanged. I mean, that's, wow. Yeah, I mean, you might survive the war. <laughs> you won't survive <laughs> hanging. No. <laughs> uh, it's also, it's interesting that it's Albanact who's pressing them. Mm. And this is Keith Ness. Yeah. Now it's mm. obviously they're obviously not meant to be Scots, mm. but nevertheless, this reinforces my view that Albanac got Albany. Mm. Yeah, it does sound sound that way, doesn't it? Um, I I mean this, yeah. I I, I have a thing about um, the raising of soldiers. I'm yeah, that's one for me. That scene. <laughs> yep, I got it. Uh, any other th uh, thoughts about the, the the way that 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 
uh, scene shifts as well. You know, Strombo fighting uh, with a captain. Mm. But how many of them are being pressed? I think it's only one. Mm. And he tries to bribe the captain or Thrasymachus mm. to take one of the others. Mm. I will resign it to one of these poor fellows. Yeah. Mm. Well, I it, lack no money. You know? it's be I think it's because he's been, he's fought um, that, you know, he's, he's, he, there's no way out of it for him now. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Alan, I saw a hand. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember a week or two ago, we had a fairly similar sequence on a press. Um, and I can't remember which play it was in. We've, we've had a few, I think. <laughs> That's one it of the problems. A, a couple of weeks back. Yeah. We certainly I, had one which was similar shape. Mm. Yeah, we've, 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 had, we've had pressing. Didn't we have uh, in Selimus, didn't the, uh, the clown figure and that run away from, uh, from service? Not necessarily mm. a pressing. Um, there was, there was an element there. There was one a week or so before that. Mm. But I say, we've, it's something that turns up, you know. If yeah, there's a all war, the time. It's, it, we, we've definitely been here before. Um, mm. um, uh, any additional thoughts before we go on and see what, what, what happens? I mean, let's be honest, this, 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 this conquest, you know, has to be happening uh, in a certain geographical area for reasons that are, should, be, should be clear by now um by by the nature of the invading force um so um uh let's see what happens in the next scene in two uh as i've got it act to scene three and we're we're in the camp of albanact bless his cotton socks enter albanact debon thrasis uh, thrasimachus and the lords brave cavalries princes of albany whose trenchant blades with our deceased sire, passing the frontiers of brave Gratia, were bathed in our enemy's lukewarm blood. Now is the time to manifest your wills, your haughty minds and resolutions. Now opportunity is offered to try your courage and your earnest zeal, which you always protest to Albanact. For at this time, yea, at this present time, stout fugitives come from the Scythians' bounds, have pestered every place with mutinies. But trust me, lordings, I will never cease to persecute the rascal runagates till all the rivers stained with their blood shall fully show their fatal overthrow. Debon? Who's Debon? Oh, maybe I haven't given a Debon out. I apologize. I will leap in. So shall your highness merit great renown and imitate your aged father's steps. But tell me, cousin, camest thou through the plains and sawst thou there the fain heart fugitives mustering their weather-beaten soldiers? What order keep they in their marshalling? After we pass the groves of Caledon, where murmuring rivers slide with silent streams, we did behold the straggling Scythians' camp replete with men, stored with munition. Then might we see the valiant-minded knights fetching careers along the specious, pla specious plains. Humba and Hubba, armed in azure blue, mounted upon their courses white as snow, went to behold the pleasant flowering fields. Hector and Troilus, Priamus' lovely sons, chasing the Greekians over Simois, were not to be compared to these two knights. Well, hast thou painted out in eloquence the portraiture of Humber and his son? Yes, as fortunate as was Polycrates, yet should they not escape our conquering swords, or boast of aught but of our clemency. And now enter Strumbo and Trumpart, crying often wildfire and pitch, etc. So if you could uh, extemporise, please. <laughs> wildfire and pitch! Ah, the wildfire! Ah, the My God, the land is on fire! Ah! <laughs> Doomed! We're all doomed! <laughs> we're all going to die! <clears throat> what, sirs? What mean you by these clamours made, these outcries raised in our stately courts? Wildfire and pitch! Wildfire and pitch! Well, I say, tell us the cause hereof. Wildfire and pitch! And wildfire and fire! It's on fire! Tell me, you villains, why you make this noise, or with my lance I will prick your bowels out. <laughs> Where are your houses? Where's your dwelling place? Hey, 
I'll laugh for months and a day in her place. I cry, God mercy, why do you think that such poor, honest men as we be hold our habitacles in king's palaces? <laughs> but because you seem to be an abominable chieftain, <laughs> I will tell you our state. Uh, from top to the toe, from, from head to the shoe, from the beginning to the ending, from the building to the burning, this honest fellow and I had our mansion cottage in the suburbs of this city, hard by the Temple of Mercury, uh, and by the common soldiers of the Shittans, the, 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 the Scythian. Uh, we called them, the, all the suburbs were burned to the ground and the ashes left out the country wives to wash bucks with all of them. That which grieves me most. My loving wife, oh, cruel strife, the wicked flames did rose. Uh, and therefore, Captain Cross, we will continually cry, uh, except you seek a remedy, our houses to re-edify, which now are burnt to dust. Wildfire and pitch. Wildfire pitch. Well, we must remedy these outrages and throw revenge upon the hateful heads. And you, good fellows, for your houses burnst, we will remunerate you store of gold and build your houses by our palace gate. Gate? Oh, oh, petty treason to my person. Nowhere else but by your backside. Gate? Oh, oh, how I am vexed in my collar. Gate, I cry God mercy. Do, do, do you hear, Master King? If you, if you mean to gratify such poor men as we be, you must build our houses by the tavern. It shall be done, sir. Near the tavern, I. Oh, my lady, sir, it was spoken like a good fellow. Do you hear, sir? When our house is builded, if you do chance to pass or repass, uh, that way we will bestow a quart of, of the best wine upon you. And exit Strombo and presumably <laughs> uh, his, his mate as well. Um, One fire and pitch. <laughs> <laughs> but Dorothy's dead. I was gonna say they they can't hang on hang on there's si there's six more lines we'll discuss in a sec let Al Albanac close the sea. <laughs> it grieves me, lordings, that my subjects' goods should thus be spoiled by the Scythians, who, as you see, with lightfoot foragers depopulate the places where they come. But cursed Humber, thou shalt rue the day that e'er thou camest unto Cathnasia. And thus the scene ends. So, yes, as you were, um, uh, a, a, lot, a lot seems to have happened between those two scenes. Mm. You know, the, the war's not going well. Are they still impressed? Are they, or are they refugees? Or what's going on? Um, Me, man, all I know is my house burned down and my wife burned down too. Yeah. And you know more about the house than the wife. Yeah, I noticed that. I mean, mm. it, you can't can build a new wife, you know. I wonder. Um, I'm just wondering if it was maybe that they didn't turn up to fight. I'm just trying to see. Did somebody say that they were who actually torched? Uh, it was the house? other side who who did it, Simon. Did mm. they say that? Did they? Yeah. yeah. Ah. The the, the Shittans, the Scythians. Yeah, and there's part of me thinking that they're called the Scythians just simply for that. For joke. that joke. For that joke, yeah. yeah. Because it's a good joke. <laughs> they, they do sound more like Viking raiders. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But the Scythians seemed to think that Albanact was going to be on their side, but it doesn't appear to be so yet. Uh, did they say that? I thought no. they were they were no. they were casing him out as the, mm -hmm. the oh, first one to take out. Just they were just. Oh, I see. I see. They weren't thinking of bringing him over. No, no, he's he's oh, right. their first he's their first target because you know the the country's Fair split enough. between three, mm. so one at a time. Um, Eighty spike rules. Um, <laughs> I, I, I I'm know. just slightly puzzled by uh, the fact that there's obviously a border between Greek Greece and Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. I wondered about that, but yeah, well, there were uh, Trojan War names there, and is it to do with the Trojan War or something? I would have thought so. Um, where, where, where were they? To, uh, Edinburgh is the Athens of the North. Just, <laughs> just, ah, that's it. <laughs> just stay with that idea, and it all makes sense. Wait, no, it makes sense within the logic. You're passing the frontiers of... Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah, because they're not talking about... Um, they're they're the, their people who had fought 
uh, at the frontiers of Brave Gratio, that he's talking about the past during that speech. Mm. You are the old fighters with my father who fought mm. in Greece. Mm. Um, that's what he's saying there. Yeah. Um, and and he, <laughs> he fought in the Trojan War, didn't he? Or am I m misunderstanding? Yeah, that, uh, that his father did. Yeah. Yeah, in part... which case, it's not Greece, it's Turkey, but yeah. Well, yeah, but they're Greece. Yeah, yeah but they, they, they kind of retreated across the top of Greece, right? <laughs> Alien. Turkey then did not exist. Yeah. Well, no. Right. Okay, Anatolia. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I think we're also getting geography. slightly bogged down on the, the reality of a <laughs> myth. Uh, <laughs> A series of interlocking <laughs> myths. Well, uh, also, the Huns clearly made it all the way to Great Britain. <laughs> of course they did. Yeah. The Trojans did, so why not them? Yeah, I was just about to say the Trojans managed it. <laughs> and not only that, these Scythian hum, Huns have a very early modern army. Mm. Mm. Ooh, also, having lived in Hungary and knowing a bit of the, the, the Huns, I don't think the tribes were quite rampaging around that time, but never mind. <laughs> Yeah, they were Magyars, it's a few hundred years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Exactly. Yeah. Again, st st I, I think stop trying to connect the real world to this. It's, 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 it's a flaw. Um, it's true. a story. Just go with that. Galaxy far, far away. Um, I, that said, um, you know, Strumbo, as you know, this, this edification of them as a sort of cobblers, which is sort of, again, that every time Strumbo, uh, et cetera, come on stage, they seem to be in a slightly different play. Because mm -hmm. the Strumbo from the first scene is not quite the same Strumbo of the second and the, then the third scene. There, there's something weirdly disconnected yeah. about that. Um, there is. See an avatar of some, some industry. I don't know if there's anything missing, but why would that be? I missed obviously yesterday first um, first introduction to him. But is there a logic? He, he was a pseudo intellectual in the first scene. Uh, right. Yeah. He so is he a reflection of whatever Geronimo. happens? Yeah. Uh, I'm just wondering whether it's just simply that it's whatever gag works for the each, whichever scene, that it's because mm. it's, you know, there's some license that logic doesn't matter so long as you get the laughs. Um, it's not a very satisfactory thing to talk about a play, I mean, but it's just, that's, that's just what immediately leaps to my mind. Just yeah. because he's a peasant cobbler doesn't mean that he doesn't have many sides to his character, right? Yeah, true, true, absolutely. True. But there was no indication he was a cobbler in the first scene. <laughs> <laughs> He just talked he a lot of them. in the first scene. Mm. So anyway, contradictions, they're still fun. I mean, Strombo is still great. You know, he's a part I'd take uh, any day. Um, <laughs> you know, if only to work <laughs> out the contradictions. Um, anyway, let's move on to the next scene. Scene four. Um, uh, we have uh, enter Humber. Hubba. Uh, uh, we've got uh, Seeger, Trussia and their soldiers, etc. Hubba, go take a coronet of our horse, as many lancers and light-armoured knights as may suffice for such an enterprise, and place them in the grove of Caledon. With these, when as the skirmish doth increase, retire thou from the shelter of the wood and set upon the weakened Trojans' backs. For policy, joined with chivalry, can never be put back from victory. Uh, Elt, enter Albanac, and he's still got the clowns with him, uh, as the, uh, uh, the stage direction says. So um, he uh, he enters with uh, with his clown army, uh, which suggests this this war may be not be on an equal footing. Thou base-born Hun, how dost thou be so bold as once to menace warlike Albanac, the great commander of these regions? But thou shalt buy thy rashness with thy death, and rue too late thy overbold attempts. For with this sword, this instrument of death that hath been drenched in my foeman's blood, I'll separate thy body from thy head, and set that coward blood of thine abroach. Hey, with this staff. Great Strombo's instrument, I'll crack thy coxcomb, paltry Scythian. Nor wreck I of thy threat, thou princox boy, nor do I fear thy foolish insolency. And but thou better use thy bragging blade than thou dost rule thy overflowing tongue, superbious Britain. 
Thou shalt know too soon the force of Humber and his Scythians. And let them fight. And uh, there's, there's, there are some confused stage directions here. It says uh, uh, Humber and his soldiers run in. Uh, that may have happened earlier. It's a little confused. But anyway, there's says some fighting happens in the last two lines of the scene. Oh, horrible! Terrible! And exuant all. Um... So it seems that possibly this scene is, is less two armies squaring off, but actually Humber comes on, makes a speech, Albanac comes on, makes a speech, and that there's, there's an actual back and forth between here. It's a little confused. Um, the way I would see it, Robert, is that Humber exits at the end of his speech. Mm, yes. Humber remains and is the one who Albanac is, is basically going the, uh, you know, Come on, if you think you're hard enough, mate. Yeah. Yeah, but he's supposed to have taken the, the coronet of horse and be lying in wait to fall on their back when the the battles joined. Mm. Yeah. So it, it it yeah it feels more like that. Hubber exits and then Hubber re-enters. That seems to make more sense. Um, uh, that there's an awful lot of. But anyway, it's, there's a lot of stuff to um, potentially unpack in that. Let's go into the next scene. Uh, let's see where it goes before we uh, do any dangerous speculation. So, uh, next scene, scene five uh, or scene four, depending on uh, uh, scene six, depending on uh, script. So, act five uh, to scene five. Uh, sound the alarm. Enter Humber and his soldiers. How bravely this young Briton, Albanact, darteth abroad the thunderbolts of war, beating down millions with his furious mood, and in his glory triumphs over all, moving the mass squadrons of the ground, heaps hills on hills to scale the starry sky, as when Briareus, armed with an hundred hands, flung forth an hundredth mountains at great Jove, and when the monstrous giant Monicus hurled Mount Olympus at great Mars his target, and shot huge cedars at Minerva's shield. How doth he overlook with haughty front my fleeting hosts, and lifts his lofty face against us all that now do fear his force, like as we see the wrathful sea from far, and in great mountain heaped with hideous noise, with thousand billows beat against the ships and toss them in the waves like tennis balls. And someone sounds the alarm. I me. I fear my hubber is surprised. And it sounds again, enter Albanact. Follow me, soldiers, follow Albanact. Pursue the Scythians flying through the field. Let none of them escape with victory, that they may know the Britain's forces more than all the power of the trembling Huns. Forward, brave soldiers, forward, keep the chase. He that takes captive Humber or his son. Uh, shall be rewarded with a crown of gold. And the sound alarms, let them fight. Humber give back. Hubber enter at their backs and kill Debon. Let Strumbo fall down. Albanac run in and afterwards enter wounded. Injurious fortune, hast thou crossed me thus? Thus in the morning of my victories, thus in the prime of my felicity to cut me off by such hard overthrow. Hast thou no time thy rancour to declare, but in the spring of all my dignities? Hast thou no place to spit thy venom out, but on the person of young Albanact? Aye, that erewhile did scare mine enemies and drove them almost to a shameful flight. Aye, that erewhile full lion-like did fare among the dangers of the thick thronged pikes must now depart, most lamentably slain by Humber's treacheries and fortune's spites. Cursed be her charms, damned be her cursed charms that doth delude the wayward hearts of men, of men that trust unto her fickle wheel, which never leaveth turning upside down. O oh, gods, O oh, heavens, allot me but the place where I may find her hateful mansion, I'll pass the Alps to watery marrow, 
where fiery Phoebus in his chariot, the wheels whereof are decked with emeralds, cast such a heat, yea, such a scorching heat, and spoileth flora of her checkered grass. I'll overrun the mountain Caucasus, where fell Chimera in her triple shape, rolleth hot flames from out her monstrous paunch, searing the beast with issue of her gorge. Ah, oh, past the frozen zona, where icy flakes stopping the passage of the fleeting ships do lie like mountains in the congealed sea, where, if I find that hateful house of hers, I'll pull the pickle wheel from out her hands and tie herself in everlasting bands. But all in vain, I breathe these threatenings. The day is lost. The Huns are conquerors, dead on his slain. My men are done to death. The current swift swim violently with blood. And last, oh, did this last night so long last, myself with wounds past all recovery must leave my crown for humber to possess. Lord, have mercy upon us, masters. I think this is a holy day. Every man lies sleeping in the fields, but God knows, full sore against their wills. Fly, noble Albanact, and save thyself. The Scythians follow with great celerity, and there's no way but flight or speedy death. Fly, noble Albanact, and save thyself. And exit Thrasymachus, and uh, another alarum sounds. Nay, let them fly that fear to die the death, that tremble at the name of fatal moors. Never shall proud Humber boast or brag himself that he hath put young Albanact to flight. At least he should triumph at my, di de at my decay. This sword shall reave his master of his life, that hath a oft hath saved his master's doubtful life. But, oh, my brethren, if you care for me, revenge my death upon his traitorous head. Oh. Et vos caeis domus es nigrantis regi aditis, qui regitis regido stigios modaramine lucos, nox ceci regina poli purialis erinas, dieque, Diaque omnes, Albanum tulite regem, tulite flumineis undis rigidaque pollude, nune me fata vocant, loc condam pectore ferum. And he thrusts himself through. Enter Trompart. Oh, what has he done? His nose bleeds, but oh, I smell a fox. Look where my master lies, master, master. Let me alone, I tell thee, for I am dead. Yet one word, good master. Shh, I will not speak, for I am dead, I tell thee. And is my master dead? Oh, sticks and bones, brickbats and bones. And is my master dead? Oh, you cockatrice and you bablatrice that in the woods dwell, you Briars and brambles, you cook shops and shambles, come howl and yell, with howling and screeching, with wailing and weeping, come you to lament. Oh, colliers of Croydon, and rustics of Royden, and fishers of Kent, for Strumbo, the cobbler, the fine merry cobbler of Caithness town, at this same stour, at this very hour, lies dead on the ground. Oh, master, thieves, thieves, thieves! Where be they? Oh, cox me, canny bobbikin! Let me be rising! Be gone! We shall be robbed by and by! And they exit, and we've got one short scene before we're at the end of the act, so I think we'll rattle straight into it. Enter Humba, Hubba, Seeger, Thrasia, Estrid, and the soldiers. Thus, from the dreadful shock of furious Mars, thundering alarms and ramp. Ranusius drum, we are retired with joyful victory. The slaughtered Trojans, squeltering in their blood, infect the air with their carcasses and are a prey for every ravenous bird. So perish they that are enemies, so perish they that love not Humber's wheel, and mighty Jove, command of the world, protect my love from all false treacheries. Thanks. 
lovely Estrild, solace to my soul. But valiant Hubba, for thy chivalry, declared against the men of Albany, lo, here a flowering garland wreathed of bay as a reward for thy forward mind. And sets it on his head. This unexpected honour, noble sire, will prick my courage into braver deeds and cause me to attempt such hard exploits that all the world shall sound of Hubba's name. And now, brave soldiers, for this good success, carouse whole cups of Amazonian wine, sweeter than nectar or ambrosia, and cast away the clods of cursed care with goblets crowned with Selimaeus gifts. Now let us march to Abis silver streams that clearly glide along the champagne fields and moist the grassy meads with humid drops. Sound drums and trumpets, sound up cheerfully, sith we return with joy and victory. And thus ends the act. We, I, I, I sort of let that run through because there's lots of action, most of it's sort of an ongoing battle thing. There's several things to note. First of all, uh, weirdly, I don't know why it's not formatted that way, Trompart, your big speech about Is My Master Dead should actually be a, a reigned in verse uh, form. Ah. Um, mm. it, uh, it, that was, uh, mm. was not how it should be formatted because it gives a very different impression of the kind of thing it should be. Um, mm. Uh, I, I love the fact that Strombo, you know, falls down and just keeps lying on stage. <laughs> just going, have, we yeah. not, have we now actually just solved the, the Strombo um, thing? I, I kind of posited it earlier that maybe he was kind of a reflection, but uh, obviously is, I wonder if Strombo and Trompa are part of a dumb show and then come back into life when needed to illustrate things. Because it's funny that Trompa immediately uh, is obviously talking to Strombo straight after Alba has, uh, has killed himself. And of course, so it's a reflection of, of action somehow as a device. There, there does seem to be um, a mm. deliberate comic reiteration of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he, he gets his sort of uh, wailing speech about the death of his master in a sort of echo of, um, of Alba next thing about himself. Um, and, you know, Strombo, I said just Strombo just lying there. Just, just. Um, I'm dead. Who are you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm dead. Shoo, shoo. It's so playful. It's so playful. Dead. <laughs> he, he still seems very separate, um, or they both Ooh. seem very separate. And yeah, I, I, I don't know whether they're connected to the, the dumb show, whether that's just the, the license of the clown still. Um, it's weird that um, Abenak gets this kind of, you know, Latin rousing speech. He gets his great noble suicide, and then it's just undercut immediately. Mm. <laughs> that seems to be what this play's doing. It, it, yeah. The moment you have any kind of serious action, send in the clowns. Um, <laughs> and Abernak's <laughs> army seems to be mostly made of clowns. <laughs> uh, no wonder he loses. <laughs> <laughs> terrifying. Well, he's Scottish <laughs> because he's a cobbler of Case and S. Yeah. Yeah, but, but I, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think there's any Scottishness here. I mean, what, yeah. what I love is that you get all these Scythians and Amazonians and all the all all the commander ranks are, are are heavily into classical references, and then you've got Trumpart, the Colliers of Croydon and the mm. Rustics of Royden mm. and the Fishers of Kent. <laughs> I think they're wonderful. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Alan. I'm, I'm still getting the impression of the two as the broker's men brought on to cover it while uh, the stage is cleared by the ASMs. Well, they so say there's nothing to clear <laughs> because... Uh, Albrecht's, uh, Albanac's body. Yeah, well, yeah, th maybe. Um, but then that also um, might still be there for the next scene anyway. Um, you know, you've got dumb shows as well coming up. So there's plenty of places you can clear the stage. And it's not like they've got the kind of mechanics where it's necessary. Um, if anything, his body should still be lying there while they're doing what they're doing to put it even more in, in relief. Um, I mean, yes, they, they do function as, as a comic unit in that way. I mean, they do function that way, it seems to be. Um, 
but also they ground the play. I mean, it's very difficult watching these armies and these commanders and these invaders and all these people who um, are more familiar in Troy than in Yorkshire. Um, and yet, so you've got, you've got these two who make you feel, and all their friends, that this is actually somewhere where you could be. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, it, 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 there's also that, that little detail at the end uh, with Humber and Hubber of uh, Humber, you know, the, 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 the bay garland on his head. There's, they mm. seem to be very interested in nature. Uh, do these Huns, you know, Elstrid makes this long speech about the, 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 the landscape and they seem to have a, that is, I don't know if that's a sort of pagan connection with the land kind of suggestion there or, or I'm just, that, that little gesture is, is, is actually quite, quite sweet and I, I, I thought that was really interesting, it's getting a handle very, on them. Also, the laurel... Yeah, sorry, uh, Simon. So I was going to say, is that not just a nod to the, the laurel wreath as well yeah. of the, of the mm. emperor? That's what I thought it was. It was the, the Roman thing. <laughs> but it's a flowering garland. I mean, it's it's, it's just as an image. It's uh, it's uh, it's not quite that imperial image. It's, again, it's slightly different, and I'm, it's the slight difference that's interesting me as an aesthetic. Mm. The um, Robert, you might want the end of Alba's speech, the Latin. That nune should be nunc, I think. Oh yes. May Fata Wakant. Ah, uh, and there's something very odd about that lock condam, unless, I mean, that's very strange. Yeah, I I, 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 to be fair, I probably didn't uh, check it. So, um, I'll just uh, have a quick scan. I mean, I think it's, it is, it is as it is. Uh, I right. don't, I don't think there's an overt typo. Um, Which line are we talking again? Just the the last album, line of the Latin. The last Alba makes before he dies. Yeah, yeah, yeah it should be hot. Long. Should be hot, not hot. 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 Would the audience have understood that Latin? Some of them might, um, <laughs> but not necessarily a lot. Of, I mean, it's a lot of Latin. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to kill myself in a moment is part of the text. So, you know, that, that bit they'll probably get by the gesture and general sense of calling on, on, on gods of revenge to revenge and terrible things to happen. I mean, it's basically what it's saying. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's um, and you know, my doom is coming. Alan. Yeah. I mean, my, my thought follows on from that in some ways that the, you've got the Latin, which will probably be got, by the people who are sitting in the posh seats. Mm -hmm. And then the, the two comics who are effectively trying to keep the groundlings from uh, disrupting the whole thing by saying, oh, bored. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he's, he's it, 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 you know, it is a longish speech, but uh, you know, he is, he's, he's not well. So, you know, there's a lot of room for the actor to be doing, you know, oh, oh, oh uh, acting. <laughs> oh, I'm dying. <laughs> uh, Dan. Um, this is alluding to my point from yesterday about this play definitely having been revised and specifically in 1595 we know because jumping far ahead to the epilogue there's a reference to the actual year um, that it was that the epilogue was written it's Ate's epilogue written eight and thirty years or 38 years into um, Queen Elizabeth's reign um, I wonder if I mean the whole theory which is a pretty sound theory of epilogues, prologues, songs, etc. cetera, um, potentially um, um, perhaps dumb shows, some of them being added or tinkered with or whatnot um, because of actors that they liked or clowns who they were trying to write in, et cetera, et cetera, which, is, which might account for some of the, I mean, I guess the, the disaccord, the disjunctiveness of certain um, scenes um, in there, much rather than for um, clearing stages or rather for costume changes, because there really doesn't seem to be doubling issues there. It mm. seems that it's certainly taking advantage of perhaps the comic aspects and mm. writing in more scenes or writing in more dumb shows or tinkering with them. 
Well, yeah. certainly a lot of the plays we've been doing uh, from sort of the or orbiting the 1580s, 1590s, they all seem to have the, the, the fingerprints of active playing adju adjustment. And mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't narrow it down even to, I mean, yes, prologues and epilogues are, are very cut and shunt um, elements. But I, I, I see with all of these is just, yeah, that line's a bit short because they just cut it. Um, that bit's not that bit's shifted that's been moved that you know that something has happened some of them are obviously interfered with in a, in a later printy way but a lot of them are just looking yeah no the, the actor just didn't like that line it went um that bit was was taken and, and that these 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 texts just keep uh, adjusting and changing over time uh when yeah. things work um, and things don't work but i'm not referring to cuts mm, no no but it changes i mean you know explicitly moving things yeah. Well, besides moving things, speech is being added on, or padded a little bit, or mm. added because yeah. of an idea to incorporate the talents of specific actors. I mean, mm. specifically the epilogue there had to have been added later, or at least adjusted for later. Mm. Um, so anyway, yeah. just, you just know, we, we, I can I can see an Albanac saying, "Yeah, I, I think I fancy a longer death speech. Can I have a longer death speech?" And then the clown going. Yeah, he can't get away with a longer death speech. And that, uh, we'll, 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 we've got a song we can throw in that's a bit like his death speech. We can th throw, throw, can we mock it? Yeah, go for it. S see how it works on Thursday. Um, you know, it, I, 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 I see these texts as very much have that, that element as, as, as an option. Absolutely. Uh, any other thoughts about what we've, what we've read as opposed to, um, we, we sort of skimmed over the, the nature of those battle interactions. It's a very busy moment and there's lots of room for manoeuvre in, in terms of how we might do it um, today, especially as at the moment most of the army seems to be made of <laughs> clowns. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> who is the armed forces um, and how does that battle go? I'm finding it quite hard to say. I have to pay really close attention to the dialogue mm. to know exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, unlike the Cinemus, we, I found that that one, that play, we could follow it quite easily. But this one, I, I think, it needs a more focused attention, even on the clowns and the clowning, to get exactly what's going on on, on stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, any additional thoughts before we move into Act 3, which is relatively short? Nope. Okie dokie. <coughs> well, gird your loins, ladies and gentlemen. Enter Arte as before. The Dumb Show. A crocodile sitting on a river's bank. And a little snake... Criticised my snail earlier. Uh, a little snake stinging it. Then let both of them fall into the water. Skelera in autorum cadont, high on a bank by Nilus boisterous streams, fearfully sat the Egyptian crocodile, dreadfully grinding in her sharp long teeth the broken bowels of a silly fish. His back was armed against the dint of spear with shields of brass that shined like burnished gold. And as he stretched forth his cruel paws, a subtle adder creeping closely near, thrusting his forked sting into his claws, privily shed his poison through his bones, which made him swell, that there his bowels burst that did so much in his own greatness trust. So Humber, having conquered Albanac, doth yield his glory unto Lochrine's sword. Mark what ensues, and you may easily see that all our life is but a tragedy. Oh, all our life is but a tragedy. Uh, cheerful, cheerful, happy words there from Arte. Um, <laughs> Again, still, I don't know if it's just the brilliant way that uh, you read it, Sarah, but it, it does seem like <laughs> it's sheer Khan or... or um... <laughs> yeah, she's really enjoying herself, isn't she? Like, relating all this misery. <laughs> and, and you're right, this, this dumb show very much feels like a narration as it's happening as well, and that first, first part, rather than it happens and then it, it feels like it can go with the motion of, of, of those moments. Um, and then it's just that... Yeah, just so story uh, uh, attempt to um, 
to explain why things happen. No, I don't know. Ignore me. Um, <laughs> any additional thoughts? So the crocodile and the sink. Well, possibly. Um, I don't know how they do the crocodile and the, uh, the the little snake puppets or or, or giant costumes. Giant costumes. Giant costumes. Uh, and you know, puppets could be different. Depends what kind of puppets. You could have overhead strings, uh, or you can have, you know. Um, I want shadow puppets. Yeah, yeah. We well, we we could definitely do shadow puppets. Actually, shadow puppets would be really good for a modern production. Actually, I'd yeah. really like to do that. That'd be cool. Um. Okay, uh, let's uh, move into some action. So we've uh, had uh, Humber, the, the hint that Humber, having killed Amanak, doth yield his glory unto Lockrhine's sword. So let's see precisely what that's all about. Uh, act uh, three, scene one. Uh, we have um, enter Lockrhine, Wendelin, Corin, uh, Corinius, uh, Asaracus, Thrasymachus, and Camber. And is this true? Is Albanactus slain? Hath cursed Humber with his struggling host, with that his army made of mongrel curs, brought our redoubted brother to his end? Oh, that I had the Thracian Orpheus harp for to wake out of the infernal shade those ugly devils of black Erebus that might torment the damned traitor's soul. Oh, that I had Amphion's instrument to quicken with his vital notes and tunes the flinty joints of every stony rock by which the Scythians might be punished. For by the lightning of almighty Jove, the Hun shall die had he 10,000 lives. And would to God he had 10,000 lives that I might with the Armstrong Hercules crop off so vile and hydrous hissing heads. But say me, cousin, for I long to hear how Albanact came by untim untimely death. After the traitorous host of Scythians entered the field with martial equipage, young Albanact, impatient of delay, led forth his army against the straggling mates, whose multitude did daunt our soldiers' minds. Yet nothing could dismay the forward prince, and with a courage most heroical, and to a lion amongst a flock of lambs made havoc of the faint heart fugitives, hewing a passage through them with his sword. Yea, we had almost given them the repulse, when suddenly, from out the silent wood, Hubba, with 20,000 soldiers, cowardly came upon our weakened backs, and murdered all with fatal massacre. Amongst the which old Deburn, martial knight, with many wounds was brought unto the death, and Albanact, oppressed with multitude, whilst valiantly he felled his enemies, yielded his life and honour to the dust. He, being dead, the soldiers fled amain, and I alone escaped them by flight to bring you tidings of these accidents. Not aged Priam, king of stately Troy, grand emperor of barbarous Asia, when he beheld his noble-minded son slain traitorously by all the Myrmidons, lamented more than I for Albanact. Not Hecuba, the queen of Ilia, when she beheld the town of Pergamus, her palace, burnt with all devouring flames, her fifty sons and daughters, fresh of hue, murdered by a wicked purist bloody sword, Shed such sad tears as I found that. Grief of Neo, fair Athens' queen, for her seven sons, magnanimous in field, for her seven daughters, fairer than the rest, is not to be compared with my laments. In vain you sorrow for the slaughtered prince, in vain you sorrow for his overthrow. He loves not most that doth lament the most, but he that seeks to venge the injury. Think you to quell the enemy's warlike train with childish sobs and womanish laments? Unsheathe your swords, unsheathe your conquering swords, and seek revenge, the comfort for this sore. In Cornwall, where I hold my regiment, even just ten thousand valiant men at arms hath Corinius ready at command, all these and more, if need shall more require, hath Corinius ready at command. 
and in the fields of martial Cambria, close by the boisterous Iskin silver streams, where light foot fairies skip from bank to bank, full 20,000 brave, courageous knights, well exercised in feats of chivalry, in manly manner most invincible. Young Camba hath with golden victual. All these and more, if need shall more require, I offer up to avenge my brother's death. Thanks, loving uncle, and good brother too, for this revenge, for this sweet word revenge, must ease and cease my wrongful injuries. And by the sword of bloody Mars, I swear, ne'er shall sweet quiet enter this my front, till I be venged on, this, on his traitorous head that slew my noble brother Albanact. Sound drums and trumpets, muster up the camp, for we will straight march to Albania. Yeah, indeed. It is, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, well, that's the problem with Albany, is that, yes, uh, it's, uh, Albania is a perfectly legitimate way of putting it. Uh, um, yeah, it, it's a really interesting scene. So it starts off with all the sadness, sadness, how did he die? Again, it's a very muted scene. And then, uh, Corinius just goes, oh, get up. I mean, they do have a grief competition for no reason whatsoever. I think they've got a reason. His brother's dead. Yeah, but it's like if you if you have a grief competition about, oh, I'm so sad, I'm so sad, it doesn't feel all that sincere. I don't know if it's supposed to come across that way. I, I, I think it is supposed to be sincere. It's just, it's leading the audience into going, yeah. <laughs> I, I I don't know that it is. I, 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 is that just it's me? just it is excessive. I think it is excessive. And uh, um, um, uh, Cornwall, uh, as it were, um, you know, steps in and says, "Yeah, okay, enough. Revenge. Anyone for some revenge? Revenge is good. Uh, maybe we should do some of that revenge thing." Um, and everyone goes with him. Um, he's got lots of stuff. Lots of men. Um, yeah, it's sad. Very sad. Any other thoughts? The descendants. Oh, uh, Helen first. The descendants of Brutus are remarkably cohesive. Mm. Yeah, uh, where we're talking about uh, in Act One, don't split the kingdom, don't split the kingdom. Actually, splitting the kingdom so far isn't the problem. They're all getting on perfectly well. For now. Well, you know, we're in Act 3. <laughs> it's going fine. Well, you know, apart from the invaders, it's going fine so far. If it wasn't for them pesky Scythians. Yeah, but nothing unites people like an outsider to fight. Yeah, mm. that's true. And a martyr for the cause. Mm. Yeah. Okay, let's go into the next scene. Enter the invaders. Enter Humber, Elstrid, Hubber, Seeger, Trussia, and soldiers. Thus are we come, victorious conquerors, unto the flowing current silver streams, which in memorial of our victory shall be agnominated by our name and talked of by our posterity. For sure, I hope before the golden sun posteth his horses to fair Thetis plains to see the water turned into blood and change his bluish hue to rueful red by reason of the fatal massacre which shall be made upon the virulent, virulent plains. And because I wasn't paying attention with the doubling earlier, enter the ghost of Albanac, played by somebody else. See how the traitor doth presage his harm. See how he glories of his own decay. See how he triumphs of his proper loss. O oh, fortune wild, unstable, fickle, frail. Methinks I see both armies in the field. The broken lances climb the crystal skies. Some headless lie, some breathless on the ground. And every place is strewed with carcasses. Behold, the grass hath lost his pleasant green, and sweetest sight that ever might be seen. 
I traitorous Humber, thou shalt find it so. Yea, to thy cost, thou shalt the same behold, with anguish, sorrow, and with sad laments, the grassy plains that now do please thine eyes, shall ere the night be coloured all with blood, the shady groves which now enclose thy camp, and yield sweet savours to thy damned core, shall ere the night be figured all with blood, the profound stream that passeth by thy tents, and with his moisture serveth all thy camp, shall ere the night be con converted be to blood, yea, with the blood of those thy straggling boys, and now revenge shall ease my lingering grief, and now revenge shall glut my longing soul. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't realise I'm now sweet. Yeah, yes, uh, we, we, we didn't want to say, but uh, we, we had a ghost lined up. Um, it just Sorry. wasn't Sarah. <laughs> so the, the voice of the ghost will now be reading Hubba. Let come what will, I mean to bear it out, and either live with glorious victory, or die with fame renowned for chivalry. He is not worthy of a honeycomb, that shuns the hives because the bees have stings, that likes me best, that is not got with ease which thousand dangers do accompany, for nothing can dismay our eagle mind, which aims at nothing but a golden crown, the only upshot of mine enterprises. Were they enchanted in grim Pluto's court, and kept the treasure amongst his hellish crew, I would either quell the triple Cerberus, and all the army of his hateful hags, or roll the stone with wretched Sisyphus. Right martial be thy thoughts, my noble son, and all thy words savour of chivalry. And enter Seagar possibly at this moment. But warlike Seagar, what strange accidents makes you to lead the warding of the camp? To arms, my lord, to honourable arms, take helm and targe in hand. The Britons come with greater multitude than erst the Greeks brought to the ports of Phrygian Tenidos. But what says Seagar to these accidents? What counsel gives he in extremities? Why this, my lord, experience teacheth us that resolution is the sole help at need. And this, my lord, our honour teacheth us that we be bold in every enterprise. Then since there is no way but fight or die, be resolute, my lord, for victory. And resolute, Seeger, I mean to be. Perhaps some blissful star will favour us and comfort bring to our perplexed state. Come, let us in and fortify our camp to withstand their strong invasion. Okay, a few things to unpack there. Um, so the ghost of Albanax, who uh, managed to accidentally steal from two actors. Because uh, <laughs> I didn't notice that it was the same ghost. Uh, I wasn't paying attention when I was doing the plotting. So I didn't give it to the person who was playing Albanac. Um, and then by uh, misspeaking, I, I, I gave the impression it was a free-for-all. So... Um, <laughs> <laughs> caused all sorts of problems there. Uh, I'm assuming that nobody's hearing this ghost. This ghost is just speaking yeah. in the background. Mm. 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 So it's mm. like we've got a scene which is broadly speaking a bridge of um, ah, we've won, we've, uh, that went well, and then oh, invading other uh, new foes, new foes are on the horizon, but with the words of 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 the ghost in the background, mm. presaging things. It's a long speech from the ghost to be mm. asking everybody to pause. In a modern theatre, I don't have a problem because, you know, you can do a lighting effect and everyone freezes. But, you know, what, what are they doing during the long ghost speech? Mm. Yeah. I assume there's going to be a stage of the ghost. Mm. And they wouldn't be welcoming it in, but there would be a stage of the ghost being there. And that's what they could all see and hear it. So you, I mean, is that is that the case? Are they hearing it, or are they or are they sensing something? Um, what do the rest of the room think, Dan? Humber seems to be thinking about dead bodies. Hmm. He's, you know, this sweet sight of all these strewed and carcasses. He's lost in contemplation. Hmm. And again, it's talking about greenery, except greenery now sort of coloured slightly different. It's got more of a rouge motif. Um, 
rather than green. Um, uh, I Dan. think the toast is an aside. I think it's to the audience. Mm. Yeah, I do. Humber and Hubba could be adjusting their armour or something like that. Mm. Well, they, it's a more sort of course. relaxed. They're sort of yeah. sitting there. Taking their armour off. Oh, yeah, that was a, that was a good fight. Deck, deck chair and hanky on head. Yeah, not quite that far. Anyway, Dan. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> the moment passed. Yeah. Oh, Dan, we wanted to hear what you were going to say. All I was saying is I imagine somewhere in the balcony or just yeah. very, um, um, very much downstage or even in the discovery space with everyone just doing something else but not drawing attention from the ghost. But That's funny. That's exactly, exactly how I envisaged it as well. <laughs> I, I saw it the complete opposite. Uh, I, I saw the ghost literally, because he's talking about our traitorous Humber, you know, I almost feel playing with his hair, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, the, there's, there's, something, there's something about that. Um, maybe not literally right up to him, but the, there's a circuit perhaps going on. Yeah, I felt the same way, that he was getting cut quite close to him and, and uh, obviously they're unaware of him. Mm. So you, you two are just creepier than me and Dan. Yeah. We are, to be honest. I think, I think, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel that's been established over the last couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. um, but that's yeah. directorial choice. I mean, that's, that's, we've, we've got the option to go both ways. And to say, it's, it's less of an issue in terms of what they're doing, because say we could use uh, modern, modern effects to, uh, to separate them um, in, in ways, um, make that easier. Yeah, we haven't uh, brought the projector yet, so let's go. We, we haven't thrown that in yet, no. Yeah, I'd li like to put in a word for the naming of Humber. Mm. Um, he's obviously never seen it. Um, change his bluish hue to rueful red. Um, if you imagine yesterday's cold milky <laughs> coffee in a mug, you know that you've forgotten about and it's just sitting there next morning that's the color of humber ah uh, no no back in the halcyon days of brutus reign the humber mm. flowed blue and crystal clean <laughs> well no, it isn't that it isn't clean it's the mud yeah <laughs> it's the um, <laughs> it's tidal and the mud is in suspension Anyway, we have two scenes uh, to get through before the end of this session. So let's go straight into the next one. And it's a Strombo scene. Enter Strombo, Trompart, Oliver and his son, William, following them. So it's the, uh, it's the Strombo family. Nay, neighbour Oliver, if you be so, what? Come, prepare yourself. You shall find two as stout fellows of us as any in all the North. No, by my darth neighbour Strumbo. Exee that you are a man of small zideration that will seek to injure your old friends, one of your familiar guests. And therefore, seeing your opinion is to deal without reason, Ikami Zun William will take that course that shall be farthest from reason. How say you? Will you have my daughter or no? A very hard question, neighbour. I will solve it as I may. What reason have you to demand it of me? Very, sir. What reason I do when my sister was in the barn to tumble her upon the hay and to fish her belly? <laughs> Mas, thou sayest true. Well, but have you? would you have me marry her, therefore? No. I scorn her. And you, I, I scorn you all. You will not have her, then? Oh, as I'm a true gentleman. Then will we school you, uh, you and we part hence. And uh, here they fight, enter Marjorie and uh, snatch the staff out of her brother's hand as he is fighting. Why, you come in pudding time, or else I had dressed them. You master sauce box, lobcock, crockscum, you <laughs> slot sauce, lick fingers, will you not hear? Who you speak to? Me? I, sir, to you, John Lack, honestly, little wit. Is it you that will have none of me? Oh, no, by my troth, Mistress Nice Bice. How oh, fine you can nickname me. I think you were brought up in the University of Bridewell. You have your rhetoric so ready at your tongue's end, as if you never were well warned when you were young. Why then, Godman's codhead, if you will have none of me, farewell! 
Would you be so plain, Mistress Driggle Draggle? Fare you well. Nay, Master Strumbo, ere you go from hence, we must have more words. You will have none of me. And they both fight. Oh, oh my head, in my head. Leave, leave. I will, I will, I will. Upon that condition, I'll let thee alone. How oh, now, Master Strumbo, hath my daughter taught you a new lesson? Aye, but hear you, Goodman Oliver. It will not be for my ease to have my head broken every day. Therefore, remedy this, and we shall agree. Well, Zon, well, for you are my Zon now. All shall be remedied. Daughter, be friends with him. And they shake hands, and everyone exits apart from Strumbo, perhaps. You are a sweet nut. The devil crack you. Masters, I think it be my luck. My first wife was a loving, quiet wench, but this, I think, would weary the devil. I would she might be burnt, as my other wife was. If not, I must run to the halter for help. Oh, codpiece, thou hast done thy master. This is to be with meddling with warm plackets. <laughs> Oh God, Strumbo's Strumbo's wives. Um, the problem of his love life. Good God. He literally just went. Not now, Bona. <laughs> 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 yeah. If 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 you hadn't, if we hadn't, if you hadn't, yeah, we wouldn't be here. He is literally talking to his penis. Right. Okay. Um. <laughs> It's a very, very visual scene, that, isn't it? My, my favourite was Fish Her Belly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Her yeah. Belly. I know. Uh, tumble <laughs> her upon the hay. Uh, yeah, mm. it's... We've, um... we, we've been here before as well with women beating men for mm. funsies. Mm. Mm. It, 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 it does have that sort of Selimus ring to it of uh, the random comedy character in there. Um, <laughs> albeit not so random, because he's in the whole damn play. <laughs> Um, and has a different profession and is quite different in many other ways. Uh, but apart from that, very similar. Um, I want to know the very modern... Sorry. No, go, go, go Aliki. I want to know the, the very modern sounding to be cursed, die in a fire. That's what he said. Mm. <laughs> I wish she'd die in a fire. Mm. Yeah, my oh, other one did. Why, why, why can't this one? Um, <laughs> Um, someone explained that the, the Oliver um, character, I was taken back to William's reading in uh, whatever play we did about a month ago. But he was the, he was the comedy Dutch man. Um, oh, yeah. um, Oliver, 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 where would Oliver be from? Uh, West Country, uh, rustic West accent. It, oh, it, it's it's Mama Set. Um, it's Mama Set. It's, uh, right. it's, it's Archer's Land uh, plus <laughs> turned up to 11. Gotcha. Um, basically, so, um, so we, we've got that. We've had this in Respublica and lots of other mm. earlier plays as well. It, it's, it is a fairly consistent way of writing Uwar, Uwar, Uwar. Right, right. Um, well-established comedy stereotypes, which will last for hundreds of years. <laughs> 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 um, and, and started even earlier. Anyway, we've got one more scene to do before we get into crash into extra time. So uh, we're going to head straight back to Locrine, Camber, Corinius, Tresimachus, Asaracus. Uh, so anyway, the, them lot. Now, am I guarded with an host of men whose haughty courage is invincible? Now, am I hemmed with troops of soldiers such as might first Bellona to retire and make her tremble at their puissance? Now, sit I like the mighty god of war when armed with his coat of adamant, mounted his chariot drawn with mighty bulls, he drove the Argives over Xanthus streams. Now, cursed Humber, doth thy end draw nigh. Down goes the glory of thy victories, and all the fame, and all thy high renown. 
shall in a moment yield to Lockrine's sword. Thy bragging banners crossed with argent streams, the ornaments of thy pavilions shall all be caputated with this hand, and thou thyself at Albanactus' tomb shalt offered be in satisfaction of all the wrongs thou didst him when he lived. But canst thou tell me, brave Thrasymachus, how far we are distant from Humber's camp? My lord, within yon foul accursed grove that bears the tokens of our overthrow, this Humber hath entrenched his damned camp. March on, my lord, because I long to see the treacherous Scythians sweltering in their gore. Sweet fortune, favour Lockrine with a smile, that I may avenge my noble brother's death, and in the midst of stately Troynuant, <clears throat> I'll build a <laughs> temple to, thou de to thy deity of perfect marble and of yeah, yeah. The stones that it shall pass the high pyramids which with their tops surmount the firmament. The armed strong offspring of the double knight, stout Hercules, Alamena's mighty son, that tamed the monsters of the threefold world and rid the oppressed from the tyrant's yokes, did never show such valiantness in fight as I will now for noble Albanac. Full fourscore years hath Corenius lived. Sometime in war, sometime in quiet peace, and yet I feel myself to be as strong as erst I was in summer of mine age, able to toss this great unwieldy club which hath been painted with my foeman's brains. And with this club, I'll break the strong array of Humber and his straggling soldiers, or lose my life amongst the thickest priests and die with honour in my latest days. Yet, ere I die, they all shall understand what force lies in stout Corinius' hand. And if Thrasymachus detract the fight, either for weakness or for cowardice, let him not boast that Brutus was his heir, or that brave Corineus was his sire. Then courage, soldiers, first for your safety, next for your peace, last for your victory. You're muted, Rob. And unmuted, I say, once again, sound the alarm as everyone exits. Enter Hubber and Seeger at one door and Coroneus at the other. Art thou that Humber, prince of fugitives, that by thy treason slewst young Albanact? I am his son that slew young Albanact. And if thou take not the proud Phrygian, I'll send thy soul unto the Stygian lake there to complain of Humber's injuries. You triumph, sir, before the victory, for Corinius is not so soon slain. But, cursed Scythians, you shall rue the day that ere you came into Albania. So perish thy that envy Britain's wealth, so let them die with endless infamy, and he that seeks his sovereign's overthrow, would this my club might aggravate his woe. And he strikes them down with his club. Uh, enter Humber. Where may I find some desert wilderness where I may breathe out curse as I would and scare the earth with my condemning voice, where every echo rigs repercussions may help me to bewail mine overthrow and aid me in my sorrowful laments? Where may I find some hollow, uncouth rock, where I may damn, condemn, and ban my fill, the heavens, the hell, the earth, the air, the fire, and utter curses to the concave sky, which may infect the airy regions, and light upon the Briton Lochrine's head. You ugly sprites, that in Cocytus mourn and gnash your teeth with dolorous laments, you fearful dogs that in black Lethe howl and scare the ghosts with your wide open throats, you ugly ghosts that flying from these dogs do purge yourselves in pure phlegician, come all of you and with your shrinking notes accompany the Britons' conquering hosts. 
come fierce and erinous, horrible with snakes, come ugly furies armoured with your whips. You three throat judges of black Tartarus and all the army of you hellish field fiends, with newfound torments rack proud Lochrine's bones. O oh, gods, oaths and stars, damned be the gods and stars that did not drown me in fair Thetis plains. Cursed be the sea that with outrageous waves, with surging billows, did not rive my ships against the rocks of high Serenia, or swallow me into her watery gulf. Would God we had arrived upon the shore where Polyphemus and the Cyclops dwell, or where the bloody Anthrophigi with greedy jaws devours the wandering whites. And enter the ghost of Albanact, and I think we'll go back to the original flavour of Albanact. Um, we'll uh, go for, for Sarah, if you'll, uh, I think you were Albanact, uh, the real one. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll have you do the few few lines. Sorry, Valentina, you, you, never, you never managed Albanact today. Enter the ghost. But why comes Albanite's bloody ghost to bring corrosive to our miseries? Is it not enough to suffer shameful flight, but we must be tormented now with ghosts, with apparitions fearful to behold? Revenge, revenge for blood. So naught will satisfy your wandering ghost, but dire revenge. Nothing but Humber's fall, because he conquered you in Albany. Now by my soul, Humber would be condemned to Tantal's hunger or Ixion's wheel, or to the vulture of Prometheus, rather than that this murder were undone. When as I die, I'll drag thy cursed ghost through all the rivers of foul Erebus, through burning sulphur of the limbo lake to lie the burning fury of that heat that rageth in mine everlasting soul. Vindicta, vindicta. And yes, with the traditional, now very traditional calls for revenge in uh, 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 the, uh, this act ends. We're very much into extra time, so uh, keep your thoughts relatively tight um and and brief and non repetitions if possible um yeah it's it's interesting the ghost continues uh, as a fury following poor humber and even though he's lost it's he's not just that he's lost he's this this ghost is going to keep following him it's the cat came back the very next day um and will keep 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 chasing him uh thoughts about this scene or the play so far who wants to jump in with what must really be now final Final thoughts of the session. So, uh, who wants to uh, to jump in first before I start picking on you? I'll go. Go, uh, Simon. Cool. Yeah, I obviously I missed the first bit yesterday, uh, but um, there's some very good language that I think is it, it, it's very visual. There was a really nice speech yet that uh, Fraxin Meister I think had earlier, which the, the kind of the description of the the uh, blue as your coat on the white horse. I think it's full of that kind of really, really well uh, constructed visual language. Uh, and once we tie down, obviously, what the what the exact <laughs> uh, structures are with some of the clown characters, why they're there, what you do, I think it's quite an effective uh, play, despite the geographical problems that we love to pick out, as you know. But uh, no, I mean, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Mm, I mean, as, thinking about it as a production, I'm sort of thinking about all the potentials here. This play is full of potentials and decisions you can make about where you push things, how you mm. stage it. Um, and uh, I, I always find it fascinating that they, the original name for London uh, is Troy Novant, New Troy, because, of course, Troy, everything went so well for Troy. <laughs> um, and <laughs> who wants to jump in next? Uh, Alan. Yeah, just a quick thought. Um, in that final sequence, um, Albanac's ghost is obviously visible to Humber. Mm. And I wonder whether that would be a clue as to how it ought to be treated in his previous appearance. I, I, I think it seems to be this is when he first appears to him. That seemed to be how it, this is when he actually appears. He's, he's been stalking him until his doom approaches. 
He's not dead, by the way, I should point out. He will return. Um, I mean, Almanac's dead. He's definitely dead. Um, Aliki, uh, any final thoughts from you? I'm just struck by the torrent of classical imagery and illusion here. Some of it reasonably obscure, and I'm into that stuff. I, I don't recognize. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, we've we've been relatively light on classical references of late, and yeah, there, there there's a lot of them. Some of them are slightly weirdly phrased as well. So phlegathon, uh, you had a slightly weird version of phlegathon there, Helen, with puri phlegathon. It's uh, it's. I'm assuming that I don't, it doesn't seem to be a typo. It seems to be a decision. I don't know if it's a variation. So it's not yeah. fiery phlegaton. It's yeah. not a typo yeah. for that. Mm. You do get py py pyrophlegaton, don't you? Sometimes mm. it's... it's oh, oh. Pyros is the Greek for, for fire. Mm. Right. Yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, so there's, 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 there's a lot of that, which in production you need to decide, are we keeping all of them or do we trim a few back and give the audience a you know, the, uh, a, a chance. Uh, Tamara, final thoughts? I mean, I was doing so well until we got to that original name of London that I'd never heard before. Um, I only know Londinium. Um, uh -huh. I, um, I'm really enjoying this play. Um, I have no idea how you would set it if you were to do it. Um, that's what my mind keeps um, coming back to in terms of costuming especially because on the one hand the Huns supposedly uh, even though Sigur is definitely a more Viking name but hey whatever um, but yet they're knights and they have banners and, and, and chivalry stuff going on um, so that's interesting um, I I just, I just really enjoy this play. Mm. I mean, there's lots of details uh, about, you know, going back uh, to, you know, Cornwall or uh, uh, Corinius. You know, he, he's the giant killer. He kills the last of the giants. He's got a bloody great club uh, and he uses it. It's a, you know, stage <laughs> combat. It, it, he's using this whacking great lump of uh, wood or whatever it is within the action. And that's a really nice detail to, you know, it gives, you know, that actor needs to be big and club wieldy but also older as well. You know, he's, he's of his father's generation. There's a generational thing. Elizabeth. Oh, yes, I was just following on from what you were saying, Rob, that um, the play is really workable because it's character-driven. It's driven, a lot of the plays that we've done recently has been action-driven, but this one is really characters, and I, I kind of look forward to seeing Strombo again and see what he's got up to. As well as Ham, um, as Hubba and Ham, Hamba and Camba, and the characters are really uh, memorable, and they drive the narrative forward. So I quite like that about the play. Mm. It is interesting about those characters that I'm, I'm slightly more interested in the Huns than I am about actually some of the, the, the Britons. I'm again not quite as as on on Lockrine as a, as a central figure, um, mm. and that's interesting. But there are lots of I mean the comedy subplot, and there's more. There's more. He will return. <laughs> uh, Valentina, uh, final thoughts? Yeah, I, I, a bit like yesterday, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I want to see how it goes on. I am weirdly fascinated by the dumb shows in this. And because for some reason, I keep imagining this kind of like David Attenborough documentaries going on. Because <laughs> it's like, like they seem like, apart from one, they all have a very animal theme. Mm. I mean, it's allegorical, obviously, but mm. yeah. Yeah. I wonder how m one might stage it, to be honest. Mm. Um, yeah, there's... Uh, <laughs> I'll In come the back zoo. To yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, <laughs> In a geography class. A, we <laughs> I, on a bank by Nilus, boisterous streams, fearfully sat the Egyptian crocodile. <laughs> dreadfully grinning, uh, grinding in his long, sharp, long teeth, the broken bowels of a silly fish. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, I'm into that. I yeah. Pay. Okay. I pay, I pay to see that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Dan, final thoughts. I hope I'm not the last. Um, just, I, I think that if, um, if you really like 
hysterical clowns. This is your play. Mm. Not really my thing, unfortunately. <laughs> so I enjoyed it a little bit more yesterday than I did today because I'm finding the A story, I really like the A story, and the B story I'm finding a bit uneven. It's, I'm struggling to hold my attention. I feel like, okay, um, if, if the story, if I was more engaged in what was, what the, what's the con's purpose was, and sometimes I am and sometimes I'm not, I think I would like it more. But as it stands, some of it does seem a bit um, disjointed. And, um, mm. Some of it seems to be just inserted in because they're taking advantage, once again, I think of an actor mm. versus um, to really advance the story forward. Mm. Uh, so yes. others I imagine I can understand exactly why you, you're, you're really enjoying it I'm glad you are so um, yes the, the, the action seems to zoom in on him doing stuff with the action and then sometimes it's something that's separate uh, Ruth final thought well, I, just to follow on from what I agree with what a lot of a lot of what Dan has said I feel that the clown scenes yesterday I was enjoying them but today they do they feel both gratuitous and <laughs> tonally wrong in some way which is why you know, I think one of you argued that this was a way of helping people in the audience to feel I'm there, I'm part of the battle, and Dan, I'm the thing about is this featuring particular actors, I'm convinced, you know, slightly convinced by that, but I'm not really, the tonal, the kind of tonal shift isn't working for me. That really doesn't work. I can't see what their purpose is. Mm. Uh, Tamara? They are a little bit problematic for modern audiences anyway, to be honest, with certain things. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, he's not a role model um, mm -mm. by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, Helen, final thoughts? Well, yeah, I do feel, I mean, I, I'm very fond of this clown. But on the other hand, I do feel that he is slightly less integrated into the play than he should be. Mm. Now, this may improve. We may find his purpose. But... Although he was pressed for war, and he did meet one of the heroes, I think, um, I, I, he, he isn't sufficiently integrated. I think that's the problem. Mm. Yes, he, he's, he, he's a witness at one point, yeah. Sorry, who's... Yeah. Just me, yeah, I just think I'm just seeing a potential way around it. I, I completely agree uh, that it's problematic, but, uh, but perhaps see the main protagonist, if you will, is the play within the play, and then the clowns are in fact us, the, the viewers, the, the commentators, everything else, sometimes interacting. Um, so to do it that way, as if it's all of the other characters, of course, are, are the play within the correct, then it becomes commentary. Um, that's the only way in, potentially, I could see it. Mm. Without it being so jarring as it is. Mm. Mm. Uh, Sarah, I think you're last. I don't know if any, I've missed anyone else out, but has Sarah, have I come to you yet? Uh, no, no, I love it. It's a thumbs up from me. Um, <laughs> it's, it's another one of those plays that gets my directing juices flowing. I can just imagine the stuff you could do with this. I, I do think the clowns are problematic, but I think Simon's idea of having them as like characters, you know, play within a play that could really work. And I just think it would be really good fun to, um, to, to experiment with it and see what, what you could come up with. I also think partly one of the reasons why the clowns are problematic is, is a partly that thing that we talked about earlier where Strambo does seem to change character. Um, after the, he's, he's just brilliant in the first, um, act and then he's 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 not quite so brilliant today maybe but also i think um i think it was dan said earlier and also elizabeth the 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 a story is actually really holding me in a way that the a story doesn't always i'm normally a massive fan of clowns um and that's where i find the interest but i'm actually really enjoying the the a story with this i think humber that last scene with humber's speech was fantastic and Elizabeth's right, you know, it's, it's, um, it's very character driven and consequently the A plot's holding me uh, more than it sometimes does. Um, so yeah, thumbs up. It is interesting that actually in terms of the number of primary drivers and actors in this, the, 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 you, know, uh, you know, there are lots of characters, but the primary character cluster is actually very small. Um, and so there is room to uh, for for development there and, and play, and then 
uh, additional supernumeraries. Um, we've got two more acts to go, which we will be doing uh, tomorrow um, with a very similar team to today, uh, with a few uh, minor adjustments. Um, but we will get to the, the bottom of, of Lockrine, and if it's Strumbo, then it's probably quite a fiery and, um, and, and un, 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 unclean bottom. Um, uh, you know, who knows? Um, so all that really remains for me to say is, O oh Codpiece, thou hast done thy master. <laughs> This is it to be meddling with warm plackets and goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.